Welcome to Light on Laurel. Laurel, Maryland is a city neatly tucked right in between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. It is a community of great people with so many wonderful things to offer. Join Carl as he shines a light on Laurel and shows you why Laurel is someplace special. Welcome to Magnificent Living Today. I'm your host, Carl Powell, and we're here with our special Light on Laurel edition for February. Maggie Linton is here with me, and we're going to be interviewing Casey Ford about her new book. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Welcome back to Magnificent Living Today, our Light on Laurel edition for February. February is a month full of celebrations and festivities and th lots of things we have to remember. Number one, Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Puxatani Phil came out and he saw his shadows. That means we have six more weeks of winter. What a wonderful winter, though. <laughs> yeah, huh? we, yeah, we can't, we can't fight that, great. right? Mm, yeah. And you know how they determine whether or not it's going to be six weeks of more of winter or not? Mm -mm. It's, they say if he sees his shadow, oh. but the truth is he doesn't have to see his shadow. It only has to be a sunny day. So if it's a sunny day and there's a possibility that he would see his shadow, then they say that he saw his shadow in the six more weeks of winter. So I don't think he really saw, saw his shadow at all. I think they made that up. Well, you know, <laughs> most of the time when he comes out, it's not even, it's barely daytime. Right. You know, and, and there, there are so many lights on him now yeah. that he's automatically going to see his shadow. <laughs> There's no way he can avoid his yeah. shadow, you know, yeah. so it's fun. Yeah, but then again, with a winter like this, we don't mind having six no. more weeks of that. Uh -uh. It's also American Heart Month, mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, President's Day, and Mardi Gras. Yeah. So we have lots of reasons to party, celebrate. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I looked up some interesting black history facts about Laurel, and I just kind of picked them up out of nowhere. Laurel had slaveholding. Mm. Uh, it was segregated in the community up until uh, the Civil War. The, the first black person to graduate from Laurel High was in 1962. Wow. Really? So the schools were segregated all the way up until 1962. Wow. Didn't they hear, hear about Brown versus the Board of Education in 1954? <laughs> they had black schools and they had white schools, but they didn't have black and white schools together. Wow. So they just started busing in actually 1961. And we still celebrate Emancipation Day. Maryland has rich black history. Mm -hmm. Roots, the story, originated in Annapolis. And so his family is there, and every year they have a Kunta Kinte festival. So, oh, wow. did you and know Harriet that? Tubman mm, was born over on the eastern shore of yeah. Maryland. Yeah. So one other big person there. And also Thurgood Marshall yeah. is from Maryland. Right, that's so. the, the name of the airport. Mm -hmm. how, how could we miss that one? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, Casey, welcome. Thank you so much. And I'm so interested to hear about your book. Maggie's going to talk to you a little bit, and then okay. I'm going to just interrupt when I feel like it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about Casey Ford, this gorgeous woman who's oh. sitting next to me. Uh, her latest book is Showers of Blessings, Rain Gear for the Soul. Mm -hmm. Casey Ford is a faith walker, a person who has stepped out of fear and into faith. She is a motivational speaker with powerful messages that captivate audiences, moves them to believe in themselves, and believe that God is not finished with them yet. Mm -hmm. Never done with us, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Casey's life is going in a new and exciting direction. As she continues to write inspirational act activity and business books, she shares her stories of fun and laughter as well as disappointment. Mm -hmm. Through it all, she continues to believe in God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thanks Amen. so much for joining <laughs> us. Thank you. Thank you. Carl, you have to tell the story about how Casey came into <laughs> your life. Okay, we'll start with that. I went to a holiday party and I was talking to a group of people and all of a sudden I just felt this whisk of energy go by me, just like it was so bright, it was so vibrant and I just, I just felt her, her go by and I didn't really see her. So then I looked around the corner because I just had to see who this person was. That and then you. I see this beautiful face, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Thank who you. is she? I'm, I'm dying to know, but I'm still in the middle of a conversation. And I don't want to rush out of the conversation, but I'm like trying to get through the conversation so I can get to her. <laughs> and, I'm, and I run over to her table. And I'm like, who are you? <laughs> and then I see her, that her, her, the sign for her book is up. And I'm like, a showers of blessings. It just sounded like it was right in my neighborhood. It was like something that I would talk, uh, words that I would use myself. Yeah. 
So I said we definitely were meant to meet each other. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I was so happy to meet you and to get you here today. Yeah, so. and I was excited to meet you as well, Carl. I mean, he has a dynamic personality. Wouldn't yes, he great? does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when he came up to me, I was like, wow, who are you? <laughs> you know? <laughs> who are you? So it was, uh, it was just divine intervention, I believe. Well, I, th mm -hmm. I, I just said last week that everything happens in divine time. Oh, yeah. So we can't yeah. even judge time, try to push time, change time, waste time. Time is just what it is, and it's divine. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, I agree. But you got to pay attention to the whispers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and way too many people don't. Yeah, I know. You know, they they think that they're in charge, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and then that's when things start going bad. Yeah. <laughs> that is right? so true. Right. That well, that's true. that's what I've learned, and that's how I met you, and that's how I meet most people in my life. Is that when the whisper happens, mm -hmm. listen to it and be aggressive. Don't be afraid to be to be the first person to walk up to someone and just start talking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. You never know where that's going to lead to, you know? Yeah, very true. Mm -hmm. uh, Casey, tell us about yourself. Okay, well, um, I'm just a work in progress. You know, mm. uh, God is just uh, moving in my life so quickly, and I'm excited about the new season that I'm in. So he's taken me from a broken spirit into a spirit that he can really use me, and I think he has to break us sometimes in order to, to um, get our attention and to move us in the direction that he needs us to go. So that's where I am right now. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what inspired you to write this book? In fact, let's talk about the title. Okay. Because when you say rain gear, it's spelled differently. Yeah, it, ain't, it is. It's not, I, it ain't, listen to me. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't rain, R-A-I-N. It's Black History Month. <laughs> <laughs> it is R-E-I-G-N. Exactly, exactly. So um, the title is Showers of Blessings, Rain Gear for the Soul. And um, I titled this because God was talking to me. I was going through so many storms, and he was my protective gear, mm -hmm. and he still is. Mm -hmm. And so I spelled rain gear as R-E-I-G-N, mm -hmm. gear, because it's all about God's covering, and he reigns over all of our souls. And mm -hmm. so that's where the name rain gear came from. But he inspired me from the title from the beginning to the very end of the book. And he wanted me to let people know that no matter what you're going through, no matter what that storm is, I'm there for you. You know, I'm your daddy. I'm your father. I'm your daddy. Come to me, and I'll, I'll, I'll protect you from whatever storm you're going through. And that's where the title was inspired. Talk about some of the, uh, they're, they're short inspirational yeah. thoughts mm -hmm. that are part of your book. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted something that was a quick read. And most yeah. people get the book, and they just sit down, and they don't, you know, stop reading until they finish the book. And it's that powerful, and it's very, very short. And I wanted something that's going to have people say, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I relate to that. I didn't want anything very heavy that you put down and it may be a month or two later that you come back. I wanted people to get it and know that it's going to be okay. That no matter what you're going through, we're all human and you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And you included a DVD with it too. I did. It's actually a CD. So it's my voice. So you hear me um, reading the book. And so it's in on the back of all the books oh, um, that come from me personally. And the first 500 are actually autographed and numbered books. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to come out with all the energy that God gave me. So he says, you, you are so special. And he wanted everyone to know how special. So I said, Lord, you know, what is it that you want me to do? Put the uh, CD in the back. I said, who's going to read? He says, you. I gave you a voice. I gave mm -hmm. you a presence. I want you to use the gifts that I gave you. And he says, I want them numbered. And I want you to autograph them. So I did that from the very beginning. As you, um, uh, putting it out on CD also gives people the opportunity who may not, who have those busy lives, yeah. <laughs> may not be able to sit down and read, mm -hmm. but they can still get that inspiration exactly. as they drive to work or as they're uh, sitting one day doing a couple of other things, they'll be able to also get that inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the positive things of, of uh, CD. And, you know, I'm all into audio books. So. <laughs> yeah, and it's also on um, Amazon.com. You can get it in iKindle and iTunes and mm -hmm. CD Baby. So I have it out electronically as well. That's that. got to do that. Now. Yeah, so I know, right? Mm -hmm. It's the new wave, so I have that. As you sat down to write each one, mm -hmm. what kind of thought process did you go through? Well, to be honest with you, I started this book in 2009, and I had little pieces of paper all over the house. I'd start a little thought, I'd write down, and say, I'm, one day I'm going to put that in something. Mm -hmm. So when actually I stood still long enough to hear from God and actually listen to what he was saying, mm -hmm. um, he says, get all your papers together. Go find all your little pieces of paper, all your notebooks, and gather them. And I'm going to tell you what I want you to say on each of those. And so I got really, really filled. And so I would write, and I say, God, you know, I, I, want, I want scripture. 
I want something to people can go back and reflect on. Because sometimes when you read scripture, you read it 10 times, and maybe on the 11th time, you're like, oh, I never heard it like that before. I get it now. Mm -hmm. Because you go through different seasons in life. And so he gave me a scripture for every affirmation that I wrote, and he gave me something realistic that people could relate to. Because sometimes I think we become so holy that people can't approach us, and it kind of diminishes the message. And so I wanted realistic circumstances that people could relate to. I, and I feel sometimes when you come off too holy, people automatically, they put up that shield. Yeah, that's right. they're, yeah. They're afraid you're going to try to sell them something or exactly. push something on them. Exactly. So when you come from a sense of this is the way I experience life yeah. and this is the way life happened for me mm -hmm. and this is how I matched it to the scripture, now I'm matching life experience yeah. to the scripture. And I think yeah. when I, the first time I read the Bible, I tried to read it like a book. Mm -hmm. And I read the book and it didn't mean anything to me. Right. I just got absolutely nothing out of it. Mm -hmm. And I was probably about 25, and I just thought that I really didn't have a connection to God. So I put the book down and mm -hmm. thought, okay, this doesn't work for me. Right. At 30, I started having those little whispers. Something would show up in my life, and I would think, hey, wait a minute. That was in that book. <laughs> and I'd go back and I'd find a verse. And I'd say, okay, well, now I have five verses from this huge book that actually worked for me. Mm -hmm. But the more I age, the more pages I find that work for me. So, yeah, yeah, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And life is about different pages of your life. You know, you, you go through different changes. And um, you have regrets, but you got to move on. You got to mm -hmm. keep moving. You gotta keep and also, uh, certain things, like you were saying, you know, you want people to read it. But they, this is a book that you can also come back to yeah. and reread again when you need it. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. like you said, what feels good or feels wrong at one age is just right as another. Yeah. I, there's a, a book I read uh, all, every day. I read Daily Word. Mm -hmm. and, but I also read uh, Ayelana Van Zandt's yeah. uh, book. And it, it is... Um, it is. A, it has different meanings every year, mm -hmm. diff on on those same pages, yeah. which is why I've reread it so many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And it's your book would be very much the same sort of thing. Yeah, and I've yeah. had people to call me, write me, email me, and say, Casey, I every day I, I listen to the CD over mm -hmm. and over and over again because they're going through different things, and it's mm -hmm. just a testimony for them, mm -hmm. you know. And they're like, you know, it, I I relate to it. And that's what I want. I wanted it to really help people step out of fear and walk by faith, because that's really what it's about. That's the premise around the whole book. Uh, uh, Acts of Faith is the book, by the way. Uh, I did not give the name of it. I, oh, yeah. I, I have that. Yes, yeah, 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 it is. Uh, once again, we're talking with KC Ford. Her book is Showers of Blessings, Rain Gear for the Soul. And that's R-E-I-G-N, exactly. Rain Gear for the yeah. Soul. Now, you were saying this is the first of many yeah, to come. Yeah, huh? it is. It is. You had a lot um, of pieces of paper around. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Your house is just filled with paper. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, God gives you a different message when you're in different seasons. And mm -hmm. I think once he knows that you're going to walk in obedience and do what he says, he gives you more gifts. And he mm -hmm. just increases what he wants you to do. This is your, go ahead, Carl. This is your say, show. I was just going to say, it's, <laughs> it's funny in life when you talk about different pages and different seasons, because mm -hmm. you do go through oh, yeah. different periods in your life, and the message always sounds different mm -hmm. when you're listening with different ears. Yeah, that's and so true. the more I learn, the more I take in, the more mm -hmm. information that I have in my soul, the more I can look back at the little things, the, the little things that my grandmother used to say to mm -hmm. me. A man may work from sun to sun, but a woman's work is never done. All right. You know, and she would say that a hundred times, and I would be like, what does she mean? Mm -hmm. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, because Oliver always tells me I'm busier than a one-legged man in a butt-kicking contest. You know, because I'm always <laughs> just running around doing something. Doing when something. you're busy, you're busy. You are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are. so it's, you it's the, when you uh, decide you're ready to hear the message, you hear it so much clearer, mm -hmm. but you have to be ready to hear that message. I think. Yeah, that is true. That is so true. Now, you also do motivational speaking. I too. do, yeah. And what moved you into that? Well, again, you know, just listening to what God said, you know, and a lot mm -hmm. of people come to me with so many different um, situations and circumstances that are going on in their life. Mm -hmm. And God said, you know, you are an encourager. That's a gift. That's a gift that people want to come to you. I mean, I could be in a room of a thousand people mm. and, you know, a kindred soul will, will seek me out mm. and we'll start talking. And so he said, that's a gift. And I didn't really realize that was a gift until I started getting more into studying uh, about leadership, godly leadership. And one of the mm. gifts is people who can encourage other people. Mm. Yeah. So I just said, you know what? People like to hear my voice and I may as well do what God says to do. It's interesting you talk about that because you know you have that gift and it happens just like I said in that whisper. The other day I was walking into my office and there were a group of little kids walking by 
and a lady was leading them and they were going for a walk and they just were so cute. Mm -hmm. And I have the gift with children. I don't know what it is. I have uh -huh. no children of my own. Mm -hmm. But if I go to a restaurant and I look at a baby, the next thing I know, I'm holding it. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's just the way that it works. Well, I walked by this group of kids that were probably 15 mm -hmm. and I waved to the first one. And the second one waved, and the third one waved, and the fourth <laughs> one waved. And by the end, the one little boy looked at me like I had missed him. Aww. And he stopped and put his hands on his hips, and he said, hi. Aww. And I thought it was so important to him yeah. that I turned around yeah. and said hello. But mm -hmm. God gave me that gift with children. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's such a great gift. I love it because I always say the kids, they, don't, they have no judgment. Yeah. They just enter things. They like the color of your shirt, so they're looking at you. Mm -hmm. I think that I just look like, like a big kid to them, so they just automatically are drawn to my energy. But it's mm -hmm. such a great thing when you can find those gifts and then be, you're able to share them and, and give yeah, it back to that exactly, gift. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and I have two children. My um, oldest son, he's at uh, Florida a and University down in Tallahassee, oh, yeah. and right. he's uh, doing extremely well. And I just mm -hmm. tell him, I said, you know, never take it for granted because God could take that away anytime. So mm -hmm. he's really excelling. And then my daughter is a junior at Eleanor Roosevelt High School in the Sci tech program there in junior RTC. So she's enjoying life. She's on the palm team. So she is really, really busy. Mm -hmm. But those are gifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoy my children. You know, I've, I enjoy watching them grow up and being active in their lives. And anything they do, I'm part of that. Uh -huh. So their friends call me Mama Ford. Uh -huh. And when you're talking about children, I just remember how um, easy it is for me to relate to children. And I, and I um, at my former church, I was a um, teacher. I taught the youth and, to, and the children mm -hmm. in uh, Children's Church. And now uh, in my new church, I'm seeking to um, do that again. You know, way too often, parents, when you say you, you enjoy your children, mm -hmm. uh, way too many parents don't enjoy their children. Yeah, and it's so and sad. And that's so sad. Because what people, what so many um, adults don't realize, I'll say parents don't realize, is they're not just raising their children. They're raising their children to be good adults. Exactly. Caring people, uh, concerned people, uh, people who have a positive attitude mm -hmm. and will learn how to roll with life. And way too often that's missed and they don't like their children. And you mm -hmm. can see it in their mm -hmm. demeanor, the way they talk to their kids, yeah. things along those lines. Yeah, and it's so unfortunate because um, when I was writing a book, I said, Lord, you know, this would be for my children's children's children. I'm leaving a legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our life today is really for our my children's children so I tell my children all the time you know what I do now is making sacrifices for you so you can have something when you're older mm. so it's worth it to me and learn to give back yeah yeah it's well, that, part that of life it's about giving back yeah. Yeah. it really yeah, is constantly. yeah because mm -hmm. life is a sharing process it really is exactly. yeah. and it can be as easily as one of the things I do if, if I've got a basket full of food at, even at the grocery store mm -hmm. and somebody in back of me has got a couple things I said go ahead and they said really I said yeah and I said but remember the next time you're in line with a basketball Hello. and somebody behind you. I said, play it forward. Yeah, there you go. I and, like and people that. Always, play it forward. And I it's like so that. easy to play it forward. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody was standing in line with me at the at work the other day, and they were a quarter short. And I said, here, pay the quarter. I said, now do that. I'll pay it back. I said, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Pay it back to somebody else who may be standing in there line you with go. you another time. Yeah. It's easy to mm -hmm. do, and that's the same thing you have to teach your children early right. on. You it's do. not just about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and that's such an important lesson in life, mm -hmm. the, the whole playing and paying it forward. Because when you don't know that, when you don't have that skill, you're empty in a way. Oh yeah. And oh yeah. I was living in Germany, and I was there all by myself in between paychecks and I was kind of short on money and I was going to go to Russia. So I needed to go to the Russian consulate to mm -hmm. get a visa to go to Russia. I get to the consulate after getting a train, a bus and a taxi cab. <laughs> oh. And they tell me that now I need $100 to pay for the visa, oh. which I don't have. Mm -hmm. So the only choice I have is to take the taxi cab and the bus back into the town so I could go to the bank machine and get the $100 back out, mm -hmm. get an, another bus. <laughs> By the time I got back, the place was going to be closed. Oh. So I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do. I go and I just sit on the sidewalk, and I don't know how to ask anyone. I just mm -hmm. didn't know how to ask anyone. Mm -hmm. So I went and I sat on the curb, and I just started crying. Like I, had, I didn't know what to do. And I said, God, okay, what am I supposed to do? Mm -hmm. And no sooner than I asked the question, someone came and tapped me on the shoulder, a man I'd never met before in my life, and he handed me $100, and he said to me, pay it back to me when you can, 
here's my address. Wow. And that was the first time that that had ever happened to me mm -hmm. in my experience. But mm -hmm. I always make sure that if I can help somebody else in that situation, I always do pay it forward because I always will remember that moment when I thought, okay, I don't know the language. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I don't know who to ask. I don't know anyone. I don't have anyone to call. Mm -hmm. What do I do? And God showed up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, Isn't that something? He's like a right on time guy. Yeah. There well, you know, it's like, don't be afraid to ask. Right. Yeah. Because way too many people, as you were sitting there, don't ask. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, every night before I go to bed, I'm on my knees. And I say, I ask for your guidance in everything that I do. Those are my exact words. Wow. Because you have to ask. Yeah. And whether it's the right way or the wrong way, that guidance is out there, and I've asked for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful yeah, way to so, yeah. go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most yeah. definitely. Most I, I definitely. go to bed with a clear conscience. <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm done. Let's try it tomorrow. See if we can get it right. You know. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Casey Ford. Her book, excellent. One of many to come. <laughs> many pieces of paper. It is. Showers of blessings. Rain gear for the soul. How can people get in touch with you? Um, they can contact me at my website at www kcfordtoday.com. Email me at kcford at kcfordtoday.com. There you go, Casey Ford today, and she is right on time today. Isn't she? she is right on time <laughs> yeah. with us Thank today. You. Before we go on, I just want to ask you both, as it is February, mm -hmm. my last show I asked people about their famous first kiss. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> 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 so who wants to go first? <laughs> well... There was this guy that I, uh, it was in high school, mm. and his name was David Byers, and he had, um, see, I can even remember that <laughs> name. That's how impressed I was. Um, he was a little, uh, he was a year older than me. He was in my sister's class, and he had, um, his, uh, he was raised by his grandparents because his mom and dad had gotten killed. Mm. And um, he was raised by his grandparents, and he had joined the Air Force as soon as he left town, you know, I left high school. In fact, he had left town even years before because um, um, when his grandmother passed away, he wound up moving to Massachusetts. And he actually graduated from school there, but he came back home and just to visit everybody as mm -hmm. he was getting into the Air Force. And that kiss, even to this day, my knees tingle a little bit. <laughs> That's, that was my first kiss, David Byers. And uh, last time I talked to him, he was living in Memphis. And it was years ago. I mean, you know, it wasn't like we were getting ready to date or anything <laughs> else. But he kissed me goodbye. And, <laughs> and you always wanted to say hello. There you go. <laughs> That's funny. That's yeah. funny. Well, mine would probably be with... This guy, I was dating him for a while, and I remember we finally kissed. And he literally took my breath away. And I was like, I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> he literally took my breath away. I won't say his name, but uh, it was it was something I, I remember. I remember that. And you? And me? Oh well, I t I told my first story. So my fr my very first one was with my kindergarten teacher, and I just had a crush on my kindergarten teacher. So she came to correct my paper one day, and I. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave her a kiss, and yeah. she sent me home, but oh. <laughs> she didn't understand, but, yeah. but it was, I, I'll never forget it because it was the first time that I just liked somebody so much that my mm -hmm. lips wanted oh, to touch yeah. them. It wasn't even that I even understood what a kiss was. Mm -hmm. My lips just, and maybe it was from, you know, motherly love, that kind of kiss. But it, it just it brought me right to, to that place where I just wanted to kiss. Well, I'd always kiss my mom and dad, but I didn't count them. Yeah. I know, right? You know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I was talking about, you know, earth move type. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, and one more question. Okay. The one thing in your heart you know to be true. Oh, wow. Let me think. That I have finally gotten to a place where I, I forgive myself. I know that for a fact. And it's taken me years to get to this point. And I actually mm -hmm. talk about that in, in my book. Mm -hmm. And I talk about, you know, love and forgive yourself. Because mm -hmm. without that forgiveness, you can't move forward. Oh, yeah, forgiveness. You can't move forward. So huge. that would be, I know that in my heart for sure. <sighs> wow. Um, I'm kind of like you in the fact that I think, not, not forgiving myself, but I was put on this earth to help people be more positive. Mm -hmm. I know that in my heart that that is a reason for, that is a gift from God. Mm -hmm. You know, to look 
forward more positively, to um, help open the world to awareness that it's not the color that you wear mm -hmm. on the outside of your skin or the being that you are, being a woman or whatever. Mm -hmm. It is to give that positive uh, feel for life. That's I love my, that. That's in my heart. And how about you, Carl? Well, okay. I know that life or as life as we know it is about community mm -hmm. and it's about family and community and they're basically the same thing and our goal should always be to build our family and to build our community so that we're stronger because united we stand yeah, yeah that's mm -hmm. true and uh, the problem with the world is too many people are dividers mm -hmm. they are a republican or a democrat or they're black or they're white or they're mexican or they're jewish or they're christian mm -hmm. and all of those things they divide us and so my job in life has always been to find the ways that we're, what are our common denominators, mm -hmm. and then bring the people together, like you two. I knew that when I saw you, the first thing I thought was, she has to meet her, and she has to meet her, and I have to bring this <laughs> together. And I like the now. energy. Because mm -hmm. for me, that is the way that I help build my family, because mm -hmm. now you'll always be part of my family yeah. and yeah. part of my community. So Great. welcome, and thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank I have you. to add one other thing. Um, you know, uh, when Bill Clinton became president of the United States, there was big celebrations, I mean, uh, down on the mall and everything. And I remember walking into a tent. There were all kinds of musicians. Everybody came through. And uh, the, the way in, uh, the uh, Winans, Winans mm -hmm. thank you, uh, brothers mm -hmm. were in one of the, they were in the gospel tent. Oh. And the last song that they sung was very much what you said. Uh, you know, divided we fall, you know, let's build a bridge instead of a wall, oh. you know, and that was the, the song that still to this day reigns in my mind, let's build a bridge instead of a wall, and we can come together. Love it. Love, Love it. it. Beautiful. Unity. Yeah. Building our bridge in Laurel. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back soon. Maggie, thank you. Casey, hey, thank you. I'm sure you. you'll both be back also. Okay. okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. God gives some more than others because some accept more than others. Life is a mirror and will reflect back to the thinker what he thinks into it. Ernest Holmes.